Tell me something I don't know. What's happening, party people? Welcome to Punchboard Party. My name is Daniel. This is Father Greg, and you are tuning in for our best board games of the month of August. Mm -hmm. We're always a little late with these videos, but we hope you like them anyway. Right. Uh, we played quite a few games in August. I played 14 unique games. Mm -hmm. How many did you play? Uh, 19, I think. We're right, which good. surprised me. I thought August was going to be a, a small month, but uh, but a lot of short games, perhaps, on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still over 30. I, I played a lot of games quite a bit. Like mm -hmm. I, As the month went on, I sort of kept going to the same games. I found, I found a few games I really liked, and I've mm -hmm. just been sort of playing those. But we also had my birthday, and right. Sarah planned... A whole like celebration day where she called up or texted or messaged a bunch of my guy friends and kind of had this sort of revolving door of board gaming all day long. Mm -hmm. So you came for a bit in the was, morning, yeah. afternoon, then you had to head out and some other guys came through. So I played a lot of board games in kind of a short window mm -hmm. of time. And that was a lot of fun. So thank you, Sarah, for a beautiful birthday. So why don't we just not uh, waste time? And of course, probably people comment down below about your best board games you played in August and what your plays were. Why don't you get us started, Father Greg? Very good. Well, uh, the first game, which was the game that we started, or the end, we, we ended it with last month because we played it at the very end of last month, and then we played it the very next day, uh, once again in August, and that is Circadian's Chaos Order. Yes. So we uh, we already talked about this. We Yeah, we I have really a review video it. that you can check out on the channel as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we liked it a lot. Yeah, and I think even the second play... Kind of things jived even better than than our first play once we kind of figured some of the things out. Well, yeah, I wasn't sure how it was going to play with two, and I was really surprised how it kept its tension. It kept its sort of frantic, sort of how am I going to do my weird asyn asynchronistic power uh, mm -hmm. while you're doing your thing? Like you still had enough to keep track of, even just with two players. Right. I was impressed. Yeah. So cool. circadian's order, circadian's chaos order, chaos order. Yes. And Great. then the other game we played was. Uh, uh, we played this one together too, which was a uh, kind of a new take on a game we had already reviewed. Uh, it was Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Yes. Uh, so we played that one as well. I prefer Terraforming Mars to it. I prefer Ares Expedition. So there you go. So take, take it at that. So okay, let's do a quick advocacy for each. Why do you prefer uh, normal Terraforming Mars? It's just Ares Expedition has everything that Terraforming Mars has, but Terraforming Mars has more. So I just prefer it to that. Interesting, and I, I mean, I think I think that's right, and I think that's funny because I would say that I prefer Ares Expedition because it has less. There we go. I, I uh, just it's like a completely unhelpful <laughs> review for you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just, I get you. I just love how Ares Expedition you can get into the experience of the card selection, the engine building, the working out the puzzle of what mm -hmm. you're going to pay for, what you're going to invest in, how you're going to kind of what strategy you're going to take, and you just I find you get into it. Much faster. Hmm. It's just like, you're playing it. Ares Expedition is better. It's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. So this, this is this is good. I we're, we're not actually going to have more than 30 plus games because we played a lot together. That's right, that's month. right. Yeah, so this is going to be quite a bit. Uh, the next game that I played, I played this a little bit actually, Broom Service. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is this is a lovely Alexander Fister design, kind of an earlier design right. of his. Not, not in the kind of... Um, medium to heavy, like this is kind of a family weight. I mean, it won cool. the Kenner Spiel. Yeah, the I, I really want to play this. I've never played it. So. And it is excellent. It is like everything that I love in a board game. It's mm. like simple, easy to get to the table, but enough sort of tension and like outmaneuvering other players to just be fun. Right. And it's kind of one of those games where like you just kind of, you know what you need to accomplish, you kind of know how to best accomplish that. It doesn't play differently every time you play. It's kind of one of those games where you played it once, you played it a million times. But if you like that experience, it's really good. So the distinctive factor here is everyone has the same deck of cards. And then you draw four or five cards. Three, three. Anyway, you draw like a small number of cards mm -hmm. for the round. And so we might have shared cards. We might not. And then you uh, play an action. And a card either has a brave action or a cowardly action. Mm -hmm. And so the brave action, you have to wait. And then... Uh, other players will follow that particular card. So if other players have that card, then they must play it. And they're going to say whether they're playing it brave or whether they're playing it cowardly. Mm -hmm. If they play it cowardly, they do a minor version of that action right away. If they play brave, then they have to wait to see if anyone else is brave. If someone else is brave and they're the last one to play that card, 
then they do a big version of that action and the other brave players don't get to do anything. Hmm. So that's the game. The game is whether you're going to kind of go little by little, step by step, or right. like timing out that kind of big move. Hmm. And it's all about just kind of zipping around with your witches around this map, delivering potions to different locations. <laughs> loads of fun. Cool. <laughs> like loads of fun. Cool. And fun to play with kind of like, you know, beginner to non-gamers. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, we had lots of fun with this. Excellent. Uh, the next game I played was a Kickstarter that you had talked about on your channel early on, and oh, I yeah, got yeah, it in, yeah. and I finally played it. That's Hippocrates. Okay, tell me. So, yeah, so it, it's a good game. I think the mechanics of this game are really interesting. My couple, uh, two maybe downsides to it. One is that this game only plays with four players. Mm. And so if you play with less than four, you need to have, like, AIs. Like, there, there, okay. there's always four players playing the game, but you just, like, find a way to kind of, like, simulate their turns. And it's fairly quick. It's fairly yeah, easy yeah. to do. It's not too cumbersome, but it's just annoying. That's still annoying. Like, whenever yeah, you get to the... Sure. It's like, oh, it's the purple player's turn. Okay, well, he's going to, you know, he's got to get rid of this tile because that's the tile he picks. He doesn't do anything with it. It just goes back into the box. But yeah. it's like you're always kind of looking and trying to figure out which tile is is being shuffled off because okay. that's the tile that he would have picked. The other thing is this game is huge. <laughs> like, this board is massive. Right. Now, like, so, like, I, I was playing another game recently, and, like, you, okay, you get your standard board game box, you know, when you yeah. unfold that, and, like, I would say a normal board game size is, like, a four pleat, you know? There's, like, four yes. little parts to it, you know? But that's, like, small. Like, I've seen boards that are six. This is an eight. Oh, my god! So, you fold this thing out, like... And then you have player boards. So, like, you have this eight, like, folded out board. And then player boards that are giant, too. They're, like, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. My God, this takes up, like, a ton of space for a game. <laughs> and then you need room to place tiles, like, right. not on your player board, like, off to the side. So, the mechanics of it are really interesting. I'd like to play it again. Right. Um, but, man, does this take up a lot of space on your table. Like, I have a big table. And my table is completely filled with, like, a two-player game. That's so funny. Uh, so, so, yeah. Funny. But, yeah, Dave, Dave has this, too. So, I'm, I'm hoping to play with one of you. Okay. Those, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Next for me is a game that I was raving about last month, and this is Skull King. Mm. I've played Skull King tons. And we played it a bunch on the canoe trip. Right. It was the only game I brought, and played it a bunch with guys. We played an eight-player, and Father Greg did not join in on this shenanigans. Sorry. But it was too much, it was awful, stupid, and one of the most fun gaming experiences I've ever had. <laughs> It was just like... So there was this moment where there was a guy that was bidding zero all the time and getting it. And he was just like jumping ahead. Mm -hmm. And the only way that he wasn't going to run away with the victory was if we stuck him with a card. He had bid zero. Mm -hmm. And if we stuck him with a card, then he was going to go down. So we stuck him with a card. He was losing like 80 points or whatever it was. It was late in the game. Mm -hmm. And then we go to play the last round. And we're playing cards and we're going around. And we get to one guy and he's just like... what? Well, I don't, I don't have a card. There was a misdeal, or he had played, like, two okay. cards. And immediately, Scott, the guy who was winning, he was like, Redeal! Redeal! <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. He was so ready for it. <laughs> and so we redealt it. Uh, we stuck him with the card again, so he said we may ended up winning the game eventually, but wow. that, that was a moment. I, I, I did hear the, the after effects of that uh, the next morning. There was <laughs> yes, yes. There lots was. of debate about this infamous redeal. Yes, so. that's right. No. So lots of fun, lots of fun. Still love Skull King. I think it's great. Great, just simple trick-taking game. Right, so the next game uh, I played was the the third edition of a very popular series, and that was Azul Summer Pavilion. Oh! Uh, so I've uh, played this game a number of times. I, I really enjoy this. I think it's probably my favorite of the Azuls. Okay. Um, and, uh, That's probably an unpopular opinion. It's a good question. I think... Stained glass is something that divides people. Some people love it. Some people oh, hate really? it. Oh, really? I love that's my favorite. Uh, I, I always love playing it. The tiles are such good quality. It makes this like beautiful pattern as you play it. Yeah. Uh, you're creating this nice little like I don't. Know, I imagine I'm creating this little pavilion. I don't know out of my backyard or something like that. Yes. And, yes. and uh, yeah, just a really neat little little game. So summer pavilion. Uh, I love that game. And then last month, uh, I played Teotihuacan, so I thought okay. we should continue the trend by playing Tekenu this, uh, this oh, month. Oh, great, uh, great. So, uh, and love Tekenu, I think. Yes. Whereas Teotihuacan is like a dice 
movement game. You're kind of moving your dice around like workers around a board. Yeah. Whereas Takenu, you're drafting dice. You're, okay. you're like taking them from this kind of center wheel. There's this obelisk in the middle, and as it rotates, some of the some of the obelisk is in the sunshine, and so if it's in the sunshine, then like the white dice are better. Yeah. Uh, whereas like if it's in the shaded area, the black dice are better. Yeah. Uh, and so you pick a dice and you do whatever. The action is in that space. You can build statues or you can build houses or you make your people happy or you can increase their population or you can get some cards or resources yep. or whatever. Um, there's a lot going on. It's it's a pretty like heavy experience, but I, I, I really enjoy this game. I, I think I prefer it to Teotihuacan. So. Okay, yeah, yeah. Both of these games I want to play. I want to play. Hmm. Teotihuacan, I want to play. Tekenu, this is good stuff. But again, like it's just like if I bought it, I would never get it to the table. Right, it, it, it's a bit of a tough one. It takes a little while, although not, it didn't take us that long to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I can never let you leave my life because you're the one that like teaches me these heavy games. Right. You're the ones that make sure that these get played. No, that, that sounds, it sounds excellent. So uh, I talked about this game a little bit in our Hidden Gems video. And so this was Strasbourg. Mm. So you need to play Strasbourg. I hope you get a chance to play Strasbourg. Right. I wonder if tonight we'll have a chance to play a couple games because... Okay. If we can play Strasbourg. Play with Mary in Dallas last night. Right. Uh, or yesterday. They really liked it. I just think this game is absolutely fantastic. Like, mm. I, I just love what's happening here. It's zany. It's quirky. It's just, you know, you have 24 cards. Number one to six. There's four of each number. You get that deck of cards has to last you five rounds worth of auctions. And you're making little stacks of cards. So maybe I'm going to have a bid that's worth seven. And I have a five and a two. Mm. And I just stack those together. So you see that I have four stacks in front of me at the beginning of the round. Right. There's seven auctions to go through. You're like, okay, well, what's he going to go for? What's he not going to go for? You're trying mm -hmm. to do the math on that and realizing like, oh, he hasn't got money in a while. Maybe he's going to go for this auction. Only one person can win that one. So maybe that's a girl. So just lots of... Hmm. It, it's really, really special. Incredibly swingy. Like, like, this, right. like this, is, this is a situation where if you don't get... The thing that you're trying to do like like every round you have to accomplish what you set out to accomplish or else your whole game is sunk i i, I was working towards something and i was doing good and then i for some reason i decided to go big on one of the auctions and not the other and i got my like important i went for money when i had enough money and i should have went for a particular guild and uh it ended up being i was out like 20 points Hmm. Or something. So it's like big one, difference. One bad action. One bad one bad action. Wow. Big difference. So if you don't like the sounds of that, this might not be your game. But I love it. I love it so much. Stress quick. This next game, um, I think I played it at like in the middle, like the early hours of the morning. Like it was like three or four of the morning. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Um, and this is a game I know that you do not like. Okay, uh, and that is uh, Baron Park. Oh, so, uh, what were you doing wasting your, <laughs> your your good hours of sleep on Baron Park? Hey, you know what? Baron Park is delightful. Baron Park is uh, just a, oh, it's a great experience. I love Baron Park. Uh, I, don't remember, I don't think I won it, but it was uh, it was well well enjoyed. Yeah, well, let's move on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we were uh, we had a board game night at the church uh, while I was away. And I left a bunch of my games at the church. And so they rolled this card of games into my office when I had not picked them up for a while. <laughs> Daniel was like, take your games home. Mm -hmm. And so they were sitting in my office. And so then Daniel came by during when we normally have coffee. But there were, like in the summer, not as many people were in the building. And so he just sat down and said, like, can we play something in 15 minutes? And I was like, yeah. We pulled out Draftosaurus. Mm. And we played a nice little game of Draftosaurus. Wonderful. I, I love Draftosaurus. Right. I think it's very sweet, very good. It's very simple. Like, it's like, you know, pick this or Sushi Go. It's the same game. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I do enjoy the uh, tactile nature of holding these little wooden dino minis. <laughs> so you have to keep passing them in other players' hands. You're always like, it's you're always like passing these, these clammy <laughs> dinosaurs into other players' hands. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is, that is it. That is 
is an issue for but. sure. And and along those lines, uh, also on this stack of games that was in my office, I was meeting with a young man, and uh, we were coming to the end of our conversation, and uh, he had some time to kill, and so I said, "Well, hey, why don't we play Fantasy Realms?" And so we played mm. a nice little quick round of Fantasy Realms. So it was kind of cool to have these little short games at my disposal right. while I was uh, doing some ministry for the Lord. Right. Throw in a little board game to you know you know make uh, break the ice. Break the ice. That's right. So uh, Fantasy Realms. Fun little, you know, try and make the most points with one set of hands. He stomped me. He stomped, He got one of those crazy combos mm-hmm. where it was like, there's like a stone or something that like if you have uh, all the cards in like a run. Yes, I know yeah. that one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get like 150 points or something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he had one of those. And so I need to get better at looking out for those kind for of sure. things. Be like, oh, that's happening. Hey? Cool. <laughs> but although the game doesn't really allow for you to know what's happening in someone's hands. So. Right, I suppose you could look at what cards they're picking up, but I mean, you have no idea if they're picking it up because it's a 7 or if they're picking it up because it's a flood or yeah. whatever. So then I, I took a trip to Ontario this uh, this time, and so we talked about our best games to take on vacation. Uh, I don't know if I took any of those games with me. <laughs> but... <laughs> so, so it turns out we lied to you. <laughs> That's uh, right. we, we took none of the games that were the best. That's right. Vacation. But I, I, did need, I did need to take... As many games as I could that would fit into my little carry-on. Yes. Uh, so I, space was uh, an issue, but I brought three games with me, uh, and I got them all played uh, over the okay. course of my trip. So the first is a game called Before the Earth Explodes. On our hidden gems list, I think this came in at 10,000 something. <laughs> uh, so this is like, this is a deep, deep dive. Wow. Is this, is this have like a cartoon dino on the cover nope. or something? It's no. It's like a little spaceship, kind of you're exploring planets. Oh. Kind of, uh, it, it's basically a... Rock, paper, scissors type of game. Okay. You've got four cards, and each card does something, but yeah. each card cancels out another player's card. So it's just yeah. two players, but like if I play A and you play B, my A cancels out your B. Okay. And then your B cancels out C and D or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you're just trying to get resources, expend them to colonize planets, get some spaceships, first to seven planets wins. Nice huh. little short game, but it's like one of the smallest so, games. So, so what's wrong with it that it gets so low on the rankings? I mean, it's it's rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, like, for some people, maybe that doesn't involve a, a high degree of, like, thrill. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to kind of guess what your opponent's going to do and, you know, right. try to play around that. You know, I can see um, how that's fun for, yeah, you know. It, it was an enjoyable game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fine. Probably better than 10,000. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the next one I brought along is a game that I know I definitely like. Another two-player game. That's Airland and Sea. Okay. Uh, so Airland and Sea, a nice World War II game. Uh, just the beautiful tension of of how long do I want to stay in this battle? Because the longer I stay in, the more points I'm giving you if you win. Okay. Uh, so that kind of, you know, how early do I want to pull out and just sort yeah. of concede defeat and give you a small amount of points so that next round I can I can beat you back. So I played that, I think we played that like two or three times. Okay, sweet. Uh, and then the last one, uh, Gun Sean Clever. Uh, uh, so just a little a little roll and write. Just what a what a piece of garbage. That just is. A, really, you oh, don't like Gun Sean Clever? I don't. I don't. Okay. Like, wow. Uh, just a that's a that's a harsh criticism. If you want that's a themeless, fine. you know, you don't care about theme. You just want yeah, points. Yeah, and that's probably it, right? You know, yeah, you just yeah, take yeah. a dice. You roll at them. This dice gives you thirty points. That dice gives you sixty. You know. Take yeah. the dice that gives you yeah. 60. When, when, when a game lacks theme, I get lost in the abstract. Right. Like I, I find it harder to know what I'm actually wanting to do. When I'm mm. just like green, blue. Like it's tough for right. me. Unless there's numbers attached. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm fine, baby. Elysium, Abyss. It's all good. Oh but the theme helps. The theme, like, right. like there's fun characters and fun images. Mm-hmm. It just brings me in way more. For sure. Okay, so we're get we're getting into my uh, kind of birthday game day. Right. We played quite a few of these together. The first one is Jekyll and Hyde, mm-hmm. and uh, Jekyll versus Hyde. Right. What it's called? It's a two player trick taking game. Mm-hmm. Really lovely. I it think, is. I think this is excellent. Like it, it it does away with the whole being able to kind of slough off cards problem Mm -hmm. so not only are you in situations where the highest number of the same suit is going to win and of course you're following suit but also but the order in which you play cards in at the beginning of a round determines what suit trumps what and so Mm -hmm. if you are playing a card um that's off suit because of whatever reason uh then you go to the kind of color card order 
Mm -hmm. to see what card wins in that situation. And so it's not just ipso facto that I don't have a color of this card, I can just kind of get rid of it. Right. Now it's like, oh darn, like I only, I'm stuck with greens in this round. Like it seems like green is like the trump card and ah, mm -hmm. I don't want to win this many. And it's a really cool thing where one player is trying to get either a lot of tricks or no tricks and the other player is trying to keep things even Steven. Just lots of little twists on a basic right. concept that make it just awesome. I can't. I can't recommend this highly enough. I don't think. For sure. Yeah. If you enjoy, like, I, I don't know which one I like better, Fox in the Forest or Jekyll and Hyde. But if yeah. you like one, I think you'll like the other. Yeah, yeah. I think for they sure. kind of play into that I, same. I sort prefer. Of... I prefer Jekyll versus Hyde. I'm very comfortable saying that. Cool. Good choice. Yes. Uh, we're we're at the same point because uh, yeah. my my next game is Jorvik. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, my next game would have been Jekyll and Hyde. But yes, yes, yeah, yes. Of course, of course. That, uh, is is Jorvik. So. Uh, yes, yeah, so we play Jorvik, a, a weird game about <laughs> kind of just like it's it's a bidding type of game. Yeah. Uh, but at first, you think you can get a lot of the cards. Like you probably think you're going to make off with. Yes. I don't know three or four of them, and in this game, you you might not even get one. <laughs> like in, on a, on in a rounds, round. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, usually you can get one, but like money's really really tight, and so you're like kind of you're you're sort of. You're kind of betting on like order, but the more people that kind of go into that auction, the more expensive that card gets. Yes. Uh, and so you want to be the ultimately at the well, not necessarily the last place, but no. If you're further back on the track, your card will be cheaper by the time it comes to you because yeah. you're not going to buy it for seven. So when it comes to me for six, it goes back to you for five. Yeah. It goes to this a guy. As for people four. are taking off their meeples and say it's a Dutch auction, right? The more people that want it, the right. expensive it is. Okay, I didn't know there was a name for that. Yeah, but it, it, like this is a beautiful hot mess. Mm -hmm. Like after playing this game, I'm like, wow, I really enjoyed it, but I don't know if it's good. Right. Like, like I think there's a fatal flaw in this game, and it has something to do with how you can't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, right? <laughs> like, 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 it's like you have a plan, you see what you want. Like, I, I think there's just, there's just like the variety of cards that are in the deck might be too wide. There might be because because a lot of the cards require you to gain resources to put on those cards to fulfill them for victory points at the end of the game. And the only way that you get these resources is from ships that come out. Mm -hmm. And then there's resources randomly drawn from a bag put onto these ships. And the ships only start coming out in the second season. Mm -hmm. So we've already played like three or four rounds or whatever it is. And then ships start coming out. If you don't get a ship in a round... Right. Like, not everyone's getting ships. Mm -hmm. So so it feels like the balance is a little off on how many ships... I, I know that you need mm -hmm. to kind of compete for it. But, but it was like easy to just get stuck... It's very. It is a restrictive game. There's, there's, yeah. This game kind of really pulls you in and and says like you can't do everything you want. In yeah. fact, you can't even do half of what you want. You but, can maybe do one thing. That's right. That's uh, right. So choose it wisely. And the thing is, is I want to play it again. Mm -hmm. uh, I I did enjoy it, but it's sort of like oh, there's just better stuff out there. Like, mm -hmm. like it's gonna have to be a rainy day. Right. You know, but I still want to play it again. I, I enjoyed I, I it. I liked though. it. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's cool. Next? So so what's next is Curse Court. Mm -hmm. So this was on my uh, our uh, Hidden Gems list. Right. And uh, again, this is this is delightful. Played it again with Marion Dallas. Mm -hmm. I've just been going to this well like crazy. There's a great thing about this game. So it's uh, bidding, essentially. So there's just, you know, you're just revealing cards. And you're just trying to see, you know, I think that these cards are going to show up by the end of this round. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all you're doing in different configurations. But there is a potential for bluffing, and I haven't unlocked that piece of the game mm -hmm. yet. Right now, I've mostly played that someone goes for something, and the only reason they're bluffing is because they're just sort of hoping right. for a card to come out. So they're saying, I've seen this character and this character already, but I haven't seen this character, but I think. And then other people are like, oh, well, that character must be there then. And so then they go for it. But I think there's a lot more potential for just like putting a five bid on the king. Mm -hmm. And you haven't seen a king. Right. And you're just keeping people away from what you have seen. I think there's more potential there. I want to kind of get into that. Mm -hmm. And I think this game has another layer to bring to life. But as it is, loads of fun. Right. It's an e-betting game because there's a little bit of hidden information. There's yes. at least shared information. You have some information that not everyone else at the table has. That's right. Uh, and so you're, you're betting... But yes, if you bet on the king, it's like, well, he must have a king. That must be what he saw. Yes. Uh, you know, or maybe there's a king on both sides, but maybe there's two kings out there. Yes. That's when I left and uh, your yeah, party. You, you left the party. That's, That's you, right. you had your own party. I went over to another friend's house and I played a, a favorite game of mine, uh, and that is Royals. 
Nice. So, yes, I uh, really enjoy Royals. Uh, it's just, I've talked about it a lot already on the channel, but uh, just kind of vying for different control of different influential figures in Europe. Beautiful little area control game. Nice. So, love me some Royals. I'm hoping to play it tonight. Very I good. asked him to bring it. So we might play some Royals. I haven't played it in a long time. Right. Loved it when I had it. Got rid of it when I moved from Saskatoon right. the first time. But it was one of those ones where it was like, then you have to make more space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh. Oh, amazing. Okay. So next for me was Jamaica. Oh. Yes. So played some Jamaica. Lovely game. We had, we had some couples over on my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and there were six of us. And so busted out Jamaica. This game at full complement is... Ahu! Like, it's, it's wild. so fun. It's so fun. That's six players? Yes. Wow. Yes. So it's just like, it still plays relatively quick. Like, you still gotta get right. around, you know, as long as the dice rolls cooperate. <laughs> but, like, this is a great game of just like, captain rolls dice, sets what the dice are gonna be, you all choose a card for that round, and then you do the left hand action on your card, and you do the right hand action on your mm -hmm. card. And you're either collecting resources or you're sailing around that island. When you land on a space with another ship, you battle. And that just gives like a party game flavor to a nice sort of family weight Euro style mm -hmm. game. That's just really fun. Because like an unimaginable number of starburst rolls where like it's an insta win mm -hmm. if you roll the star on the battle die. Right. And that was happening so much. And so, so much like edge of your seat, hooting and hollering. Mm -hmm. Love Jamaica. When I play this game with couples, I, I found that they often target each other. Yes, so yes, yes, often. yes. Uh, very good. The next game I played uh, was Bomb Squad Academy. Uh, so this is uh, a game that, once again, was also like in the hidden gems, it's like a 5,000 something. Okay. Uh, kind of like Curse Court, it's a, it's a betting game. You're, you're kind of, you're, you're sort of like counting on like this card being flipped and the bomb not exploding. And so okay. as you flip a card, it kind of shortens down the fuse and yeah. you're sort of hoping, you're betting on like, well, which fuse is the longest, but then also like if you go on a really like long fuse, you could get a lot more points out of it. So you're kind of hedging your bets. It's so like, oh man, if it doesn't explode, this could be a lot. But if it does explode, then then I'm dead. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, delightful little game. Wow. Sounds fun. Got to play my purported favorite game of all time, Elysium. Right. And I'm redoing my top 100 right now in Pub Pool. I'm just kind of slowly working okay. through 350 some odd games or whatever. Right. And it's not going to be number one anymore. After this play, it just kind of took a bit of a hit. Wow. And, and it's fine. Like, it's a beautiful That's game. That's not fine. I love this it. Is, I, no, I, I love it. I love Elysium. I think it's amazing. But there's definitely like some problems at two players especially. There weren't enough cards out in play to draft from right. to make the combinations that we needed. Like we like never saw three the last two rounds. Or like there was one color that we didn't see the whole first four rounds of the game. Like mm -hmm. there was just issues like that that just made it difficult. You, you know, you work around it. You make do. Exactly. You're both at that disadvantage. But... It just seemed to have less sort of vitality because we didn't have as much control over what we could draft. So it kind of was like, ah, oh, I'm seeing some things that might not be great about this game that I didn't see before because I was blinded by love. Still love it, though. I mean, just to see how far it falls. Yes, right. Uh, not far, not far, not far. My next one is Cryptid. I've talked about this game. I played okay, it last yeah. month, played it again this month. Still really enjoy it. Mary and Dallas tried to get it at the table. I said, no! Tin it off. You yeah. deduction game. Unkind of you. Yeah, it's true. It's a great game. They're not, they're not inviting us back. <laughs> you got you to give it another <laughs> shot, man. You got to give it a shot. I know, I do. I know, I do. I do. I do. For sure. And I will. I will. I will. Cool. Okay, this is a game I played with a couple wonderful friends and also played with uh, my mediocre friend over here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> true, 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 true story. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a great game. Uh, this is Crusaders Thy Will Be Done. Mm. There's going to be a lot of people that will have problems with the theme here. Just whatever. This game is incredible. This game mm -hmm. is so cool. There's this great little rondel t style system where you have these tokens on these wedges. You just, the action you want to do, you take all the tokens off of that particular wedge and then you drop a token off in a circle around the rondel and you get to do that action kind of at that strength, however many tokens mm -hmm. you took off. Alternatively, you can just spend your turn flipping a wedge and upgrading it and mm -hmm. now it has two actions that you can kind of divide the tokens on that wedge between. So when you do an action you're doing two actions um and it's all about you just kind of going across the map fighting some other armies setting up buildings uh the different buildings kind of uncover different rewards uh right. as well as different like 
You can do other actions at higher strength because you've uncovered certain buildings. Mm -hmm. And it plays quick. This is lickety split. Mm -hmm. The the end game trigger is just as a bunch of influence points in the center of the table. And when that pool is empty, you get some extra ones from the bag and then you count the points and whoever wins, wins. Yeah, I feel like I saw this game on Kickstarter like back in the day and... And I saw like it was TMG, and like I looked at pictures, and I was like, "Ooh, this looks big." There's a lot of symbology going on. I was like, "I don't know. This looks like yeah. maybe a bit too much for what I, I want out of this." But having played it, I was like, "Oh, this is very like not light by any means, no. but like a medium weight, fairly simple kind of straightforward process." And yeah, really good game. The next game I played, you already talked about, uh, but I didn't play with you. Uh, and that's Fantasy Realms. Okay, uh, sweet. So played sweet. a game of Fantasy Realms and. Dallas got the exact same stone, the one oh, okay. that <laughs> like, the points for the for the yep consecutive thing. That's amazing. Yeah, scored a lot of points on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else did you play? Uh, the next thing I played uh, was Letter Jam. Oh, okay, uh, sweet. It's another cooperative word game. If you like Wordle, if you like making sort of words out of different letters, it's just a, it's a great game. If you're at all into like if you know anyone that likes Scrabble or Wordle or any of these like word games. Uh, it's a cooperative game, but it just it's it's really delightful. Okay, last game I played in the month of August was for sale. Wow. Played a nice little game for sale. Okay. And it's a great little game. I love for sale. Right. I'll always love for sale. I'll never not love for sale. I just love I I love I, I can win this game more often than not. And I love that like a light, kinda of no nonsense game still allows you to employ some pretty good strategy. It's not about like here's my strategy. Here's my surefire way to win for sale. Get the space station. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. Get the space station, and then you can slough off everything else. Wow. Pretty easy. Wow. As long as you can get one Fifteen thousand dollar, and then do moderately well at everything else, and like sell your cardboard box on for like twelve thousand dollars. Right. Woo woo woo! Great, nice, cool. And my last two games are games that uh, you've already mentioned: Crusaders, which we just yep. talked about, and Skulking, which yep, we played a game of. Uh, on the Sweet. Computer. Okay, let's bring this home. Best of the month. Oh yeah, so to pick a best one, huh? I don't know. You know, maybe Baron Park. Oh that. my god! Yeah, Baron Park's great. Oh, man. you're the worst. And, okay, uh, no, just stop. <laughs> stop. Get out. You get know, out of here. I play with the expansion, Bad News Bears. You get to build little monolith, your little monolith rails. Uh, you get Ugh. to uh, build grizzly bear parks. Man, it's just it's uh, a delightful little game. Uh, it is a fine game. I just don't prefer it. Uh, my best of the month is Strasbourg. That's not Ooh. even a question. Uh, I'm excited for the time that you get to play it and you get to say, "What the." How is he thinking? <laughs> this, is, this is not worthy of best of the month, but it is August best of the month. So, party people, let us know in the comments down below. What have you played in August? And what was your best of the month for August? And party people, if you like this video, please like it. Click that button and share this video and subscribe to the channel. We'll love you forever. And until next time, party people. Yeah, I'm going to love you forever. But... Have the best day! <laughs>